today I'm really excited to share with you um, three very important topics to consider when doing business with Japan. So first of all, you're going to really want to know what Japan is um, exporting and importing, so we're talking about major industries. And then we're going to be discussing some major trends for the 2017 year. And then we're going to end it off with some projections for 2017 and forward. So with that, let's start off with some exports. So according to a source known as World's um, Top Exports, it was found that the automobile industry actually accounts for about 22% of Japan's total exports. And this, of course, um, includes such brand names such as Toyota, uh, Honda, Mazda, and Nissan. Following after that, we have the consumer um, electronics sector, which is basically like computers and handheld devices, everything that's on the desks right now. And so that's basically accounting for about 19% of uh, Japan's total exports. And this, of course, includes really well-known brands, especially here in the US, such as Nintendo, Sony, Panasonic, the Gorillas, uh, Canon, and Nikon. So aside from that, Japan is also really um, into the basically the iron and steel manufacturing sectors, and as well as shipbuilding and petrochemicals and pharmaceuticals. And finally, Japan is really involved in the classic food industry, and this basically involves such products like beer, meat, uh, soy sauce, and the miso or soybean paste. So now let's move on to some imports, and it's, it's of course the same source as before. So as um, I, Daniel mentioned, mineral oils or fossil fuels do actually make up a huge amount of the um, Japan's total imports, and in this percentage it's showing 18%. Following after that we have electrical machinery, which accounts for about 14%, and this is basically just medical equipment. Um, aside from that, they also take part in the pharmaceutical <coughs> industry as well as the raw materials, whether it's wood or ore or uh, coal or iron, and following with that we have these vehicles. And it's no surprise that Japan also probably imports a lot of crustaceans, such as shrimp, uh, prawns, and lobster. So now I'd like to move on to some of the growing trends in Japan. So according to a study done by Goldman Sachs, it was found that by 2040, 36% of the Japanese population will be uh, 65 and over. So what does this mean? It basically means that pensioner spending is going to increase and childcare-related costs are really going to be and these costs are really related to like baby diapers, baby food, and overall the Japanese fertility rate by itself is really low. And so this just also adds on to that. In addition to that, we're seeing that the prepackaged food market is going to grow. And this is basically just because it offers a lot of convenience, not only for, not only for um, uh, seniors as well as university students, and also um, businessmen and women or families. It's just anyone really looking for convenience. Uh, in addition to that, we have a study done by Nutrain Ingredients and it was found that there's a lot of Japanese consumers that are on the hunt for superfoods. And superfoods are basically just um, just really nutritionally dense foods. And whether it's chock full of vitamin A or vitamin C, D, or calcium, for instance, there's just a lot of demand for that. And right now we're seeing a lot of
right, so just giving you a general recap of what my colleagues and I spoke to you about as well as our recommendations. Liam spoke to you about the overall geography of Japan and how it does have some concerns, but the Japanese have actually been able to kind of go around those. I spoke to you about typical business etiquette do's and don'ts as well as overall culture of Japan and what to expect and be mindful of if you are to conduct business there. Daniel spoke to you about the Japanese economy and how the GDP overall is, better, is slowly increasing. And finally, Annette spoke to you about up and emerging market trends. So our general recommendations are for you, Austin businessmen and women, to consider conducting business in Japan because of the, of the upcoming opportunities. And with that, we thank you for listening to our presentation and we'll